Welcome back to the channel. This is an oracle of the renegade goddess channeled message. And it came in after I thought a little bit about a reading I gave earlier today that had a, in an earlier reading today, this uh, divine feminine of the highest authority came in. And so I thought maybe we could get her to channel in tonight a little bit with a message. Um, but also, similar card, the moon came into the reading too. So something about the full moon. See how that's, that's the title card uh, has the moon card reproduced on it. But see, so that's two times the moon. And I, I think something significant is going to happen at the full moon. But I think it's something good, okay. Because the other card that came out uh, was the star card, oops. The star, which is always a great card, came out. So let's see if we can get this uh, divine feminine of the highest authority here to, um, this is the sun card. The sun card with the title card. The, a divine feminine of the highest authority, please come in and what message do you have to give us? Thank you. Divine Feminine of the Highest Authority. Who are you? What message do you have for the collective? Feel that amethyst energy a little bit in her. A little bit of healing energy kicking in here, a little bit of amethyst healing energy. <clears throat> All right. Oops, here she comes. She's coming in. She's coming in. Oh, Queen of Pentacles upside down. So I get she's mad. She's, she's a little bit mad. She's feeling a little bit of lack mentality maybe. Are you? Are we? Or perhaps she's not getting the supply that she needs <laughs> if it's uh, somebody like that if it's like an upside down queen it might be uh, the, the queen of pentacles came up in reverse in an earlier read about body snatchers oh no not that again okay <laughs> uh, here we have the three of wands Knight of Pentacles and the Tower. What does the most highest authority divine feminine have to tell us here? This tower that we are, um, we're going through a tower. This came out earlier too in another read. We're going through a tower. It's caused by a lot of greed, these upside down. We talked about this in other readings today, the inverted people, the upside down people, 
the people who are dishonest, all the opposite of, you know, being upright, okay? This and the upright would be someone responsible. The queen of uh, pentacles would be someone responsible, someone, uh, sorry about the glare. Someone who knows how to manage their money and their earthly affairs, right? But when it's in reverse, it might be someone who's greedy and just wants to be uh, catered to or something. Same thing for this page of pentacles. Um, or no, it's a knight. Knight of pentacles. You know, this person's greed sort of prevents other people from becoming independent. So this is this kind of codependency is going to be. She's saying this kind of system that you have is not sustainable. So a new system is being put in its place. The new system is being put in the place of the old system or systems. Okay, more on that. The five of wands in reverse. Yeah, in the past, they just pitted different groups against each other. Um, and everybody was always fighting. That's kind of like the gang stalking card. Or, you know, where you have to, you got to kick a side and then there's a rumble and you have to participate or somebody makes you an offer you can't refuse. It's like everything got like mafia infested. And so that's what's, okay, I mean, that's what's being cleaned up. Okay. And this kind of organized crime has been going on for centuries. <laughs> Two more upside down, four of pentacles. So, and with um, nine of swords upside down. So this is, you know, stop worrying. That came out earlier too, that, you know, stop don't worry so much. The tower for some people is going to be lead to, um, you know, you kind of waking up and finding your way. Like that four of pentacles is always that guy that looks like he's kind of sleepy or he doesn't care about anything much under the tree, you know. So, but it's upside down here. So you're going to kind of find some direction better when we... Um, get rid of this mafia thing that's so pervasive. Anything else? This deck is sort of upside down. Yeah, everybody's going to get a fresh start. Fool. Fresh start. Zero. Fresh start. What else? Six of Pentacles. And what goes around comes around. And I think people are going to get they may not be showered with money, but they'll get assistance, you know. We will have financial assistance available for people to survive this weird time where, you know, when we're all in the tower, we're all, look at these, look at this tower card. They're all like, bam, they're, <laughs> they, got, they got flipped up in the air upside down. It's sort of like, I feel that way sometimes, like, where are we? What's happening? Oh my God, you know, so we were all being, and here's the high priestess. The highest divine feminine authority. See, she stopped by in her own reading to identify herself and to let us know that's, that's who sent this message. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I'm not sure who it is, you know, I don't know. Okay, it's a, it's a queen. Oh no. There's a king of wands here.
So whoever you are, I just got whoever you are, High Priestess, somebody out there, this King of Wands is like crushing on you. <laughs> that was just a little uh, uh, message conveyed from to you via this high-ranking divine feminine energy. She just whispered in your ear, someone has a crush on you. Who is it? <laughs> okay, this has been another channeled message from the Divine Feminine, the Oracle of the Renegade Goddess. Please come back and join us again. Like, share, subscribe. Welcome back to Fulio. I'm still in this uh, Oracle of the Renegade Goddess uh, channeling. And uh, I may have gotten in over my head a little bit. I'm not, I didn't know how to, I maybe didn't close off the, ch the session right or something because the most high goddess of the most high authority that came through early, yesterday in a reading is still here. She's still here trying to tell me stuff. <laughs> and so I want to, I want to uh, express my, uh, you know, utmost respect that this goddess is still visiting. Um, she's pretty fierce. Um, <laughs> I, I, I laid, it's, she got me out of bed at 3.30 a.m., first of all, okay? That hour is notorious for getting me out of bed, really, but I got up thinking about some of the stuff from uh, the read with her yesterday and was guided to come in here and, and read some cards. I think it's this deck that's... Um, Excuse me for slurping. It's this deck that's making this deity attracted it, okay, I think. But as I was starting the reading, you can see this same deity came right out to this. This is one of the cards that have identified the deity before. This plus the sun card, the title card and the sun card. So right away, this, this title card came out to show me that this is the same deity. It's still here. This is a, uh, I made some notes a little, a few hours ago before I went to bed. I made some notes about who this deity is. Um, I asked, who are you? Okay. And here's what I got before I did any research, okay? I, this is, is where I stopped. But here's what I got before I did any research. Um, she also has something to do with the Daughters of the Nile. There's a connection there through my grandmother because my grandmother was a daughter of the Nile, apparently. I, I don't know that much about her life in the Eastern Star, but she was Eastern Star too. Okay, and I just recently discovered these things, like maybe a couple years ago or a year and a half ago or so, about my grandmother. Um, I got that this deity's name was Hapset or Hapset, and then later when I did research, there is a hip, there is a hippopotamus goddess because I got it was a hip, hippopotamus goddess. There is one named Hedjet. Okay, but it wasn't Hedjet. It was Tauret. Tauret. A fierce mother protector is who came through. So, and you don't even, you don't even say that name unless you have the utmost respect. Just saying the name is like what you have to do. You have to address this goddess by name in order to prevent it from being so angry, it might be kind of beastly because it, it's, it's kind of like a t Kali type fierce protector. 
So you don't mess with Tourette, man. Careful. <laughs> I'll show you a picture in a minute. Okay, I got that she was the most high goddess of the temple. She's an oracle, and her animal spirit was the hippopotamus. She was a water deity. She liked Nile barges. She loves them. Nile barge rides in the moonlight under the stars while drinking wine. This is what Tarette, you know. <laughs> she likes to party on the river. And she wanted to help me sail away. Okay, she's like a six of swords energy to guide me and help guide me away from this place where I am. So I said, thank you, Most High Goddess. And I don't know if I closed out the session right. I, I asked to, but then I got awoken at 3.38. And at 3.42, she said, you had a past life here in Egypt, I guess. Hippos are water pigs. I looked that up. Then I did the research. Okay, then I did. Then I looked up. Then I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just Google Egyptian hip, hippo goddess. And I did. And let's see. I'll show you what I got here. There really was. Okay, there really was. <laughs> there was a whole cult of hippopotamus goddesses. A cult of them. Uh, from the in the old kingdom, there that was around 2,700 years before Jesus was born. Okay, they were household goddesses, and they were goddesses over things like childbirth, child rearing, you know, the home, nurturing. And they were taken into the tomb by the Pharaoh to uh, nurture the Pharaoh, to suckle the Pharaoh. And his journey from, you know, through the, after, after he died, after you die, um, there's an aspect of these goddesses that helps you get through the part of your journey that's between that and your rebirth into your next life. So they would be guiding you down that river, too. Um, <clears throat> people wore hippopotamus amulets around their necks at that time, uh, all the way up until Roman times, around 300 BC. People wore, had these hippopotamus deities in their homes and they wore amulets of hippopotamuses around their necks. So here's what Tarat looks like. Check it out. Let me let me blow this up for so you can really see her really well. This is what Tarot looks like. She's kind of a fierce, see that? A fierce, she's a, she's an animal, man. You don't mess with her. <laughs> and that, apparently that hieroglyph that she's leaning on there, it means protection. So she, she's got a body of a hippo. It's kind of hippopotamus-like, but yet it's almost like a lion. Look at her feet. Check it out, man. This is who visited, you guys. Ah! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what else? Um... I took a few more notes. Hang on. Oh yeah, I, I think that these deities may have been activated recently. Remember when uh, they had that, when they had that, um, parade of sarcophagi in Cairo a couple years ago after they, you know, they, they had those special cars that looked like boats. And <laughs> Does anybody remember that? Or was that just on my timeline? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, 
Some of these deities might have been activated at that time or before then. Uh, remember when Melania went to Egypt too during the Trump administration? She, she made a trip to Egypt and even got dressed up like a, a famous character from a famous movie, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, interesting. That was really interesting to me when that happened. I was like, what is going on here, you know? Things, talk about things that make you go, hmm. The first lady goes up by herself to, to see the pyramids and dresses up like, like uh, you know, the... German archaeologist from Raiders of the Lost Ark, really? Anyway, a magic war came up in this reading here, okay? Yep, it sure did. A magic war came up. And apparently there was an evil temple goddess, an upside-down temple goddess, and an upside-down pharaoh that we're doing black magic, ma you know, evil magic, look, magician, to somebody, maybe it was me, I don't know, but I, I have here Queen of Cups, that's who I am. I always say I, that's who I am when this card comes up. I'm the Queen of Cups. I, I um, resonate with this card. And um, yes, and yes, it, it was magic. Yes, it was magic. That's the Ace of Wands. And here's why. Because, um, yes, they were in a war with you. Yes, because of, your, uh, because of money. Because of money. Uh, because you were an heir to, you know, you were a temple god. You were not, you were a queen of blah, 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 blah. You were some sort of royalty uh, that was destined to inherit some gifts. And maybe those gifts are magical abilities. I don't know. Maybe these people were after me to steal magical abilities again, you know. That story keeps coming out. But here we have it. Uh, way back in Egyptian times version. Uh, this is what I got from, from Haaret, along with a bunch of other, a lot of other personal advice she had for me here, including that my justice is coming. This all is personal stuff to me. She apparently wants to help guide me. Um, wants to help guide me. So, hey, Tauret's got my back. I'm, I'm deeply honored to be visited and assisted by such a being. Um, wow. So now I, I'm going to ask to close this reading out and allow Tauret to go back to wherever she lives and abides. and thank her for visiting and thank her for, in advance, for, it sounds like I'm gonna get more help or more contact with her. Maybe she'll share more things with you too, through this way. Thank you for coming by for this weird. <laughs> fun, this is fun, isn't this fun? Like, share, and subscribe. So hello, part three or four, where were we? I don't even remember. This reading just keeps getting longer and longer because this uh, spirit guide that I've been channeling is still here. All right, so so the, the deity that came through, Tauret, uh, is a mama bear energy. It's a mama bear energy, that fierce protector energy. Um, what does it want with me? Why did it come through my reading? Um, and by the way, it has a connection to the Egyptian god, the most high Egyptian god. That's Ra, the sun god. This Tauret goddess is associated with the moon. 
that's why she shows up as a title card here. Uh, but she's associated with motherhood, uh, but also like the afterlife and making the crossing after death to your rebirth. And the pharaohs were suckled by her sweet milk on the journey over. I did talk about this moon card in an earlier portion of this reading. I showed you this. And, uh, and also justice card came out earlier, I think. So look, in this deck, it's very Egyptian. Look at that. And uh, it looks to me like you're evenly balanced, okay? See that pendulum in the middle? It isn't swinging either direction. And your heart and the feather are sort of equal. So I guess your heart's light as a feather. So I guess you made it. I guess you made it. Now, part of this next part of the reading is about that. Is a, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, in the first read, um, the same characters come out that come out in the second channeling. Um, and this was regarding the magic wars that, that she was channeling about. Uh, this, this upside down, these two upside down characters, they came out in the first read. Um, Somebody was buried. Somebody was murdered and buried in a tomb. It took them centuries to get out. And then there was a tower of some kind which resulted in the Cairo parade of sarcophagi. Okay, no, that's what started some kind of a tower. Now, okay, I'm just channeling what this, what this uh, most high goddess told me, okay? It was something about a magic wars. And it was all about greed. Great fortune. So, like, I'm getting, like, buried treasure somewhere in Egypt. And that kind of was kind of what Raiders of the Lost Ark was about. Remember I talked about Melania, um going to Egypt during the Trump administration and like um, getting dressed up like one of the characters from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Here I got a further channeling that there's a great fortune over there somewhere and, and a Stargate. Okay, so it might have been that all the hoop hoopla that was going on over here was sort of to distract everybody from knowing anything about stuff like that. I don't know. This is a foo read, you guys. Woo! Uh, the new system that she talked about that we're going to have, that Tourette said we're going to have is no more mafia tactics. No more, you know, family. <laughs> no more divide and conquer. No more dirty underworld organized crime. It's been going on for centuries, and that is what the generational curse is, as she said. Enough is enough. We're going to devolve, okay, back to healthy, human habitats, you know. These hippopotamus goddesses were the goddesses of childbirth and home and hearth and family and so forth. Okay. 
we're getting a fresh start. The Fool came out and uh, Karmic Justice, good and bad, Justice, the Justice card came out. Um, and in the end, the High Priestess came out. It, came, it comes out in reverse in the second read. Um, yeah, those two, see, the King of Wands came out too. And those two are the bad music magician from reading two. These two are still around and maybe doing sex magic. So watch out for love bombers is the conclusion on that. Okay, but this was, this was mama bear energy of Tauret. Tauret is mama bear energy, okay? Wanting to protect our children and being kind of fierce about it. Um, I got that this is kind of personal, but this is what I was given, that this is a spirit guide to me that selected me because my own mother betrayed me so many times. And that's really true. And because I was sterilized. And that's true too. I never got to have my own family. Um, but irregardless, I continue to work to help humans, moms, kids, and families. And that's true. Yeah, I also was selected because, see, one of the things these mama bears, if, if you're a mama bear or if you're a family person, you're going to be fundamentally against war. Even though we need it for defense, we don't use war as a business to make money, you know. Um, because it's not healthy for children and other living things. That was a big slogan during the hippie period. War is not healthy for children and other living things. There's a famous poster that has a picture of a flower or something. And because I live in New Mexico, look what it's doing right now. It's, it's gone back to making nuclear triggers. Full force, why, you know? What are they doing that for there? That's not it's healthy, it's right by a, uh, Santa Fe and that that laboratory I'm sorry people but they're not getting good marks in the safety department lately uh, and also now that abortion is illegal in other states it's everybody's going to stampede to bring their abortion clinic here um, you know I've said this is kind of like a principality you know there's a lot of military activity in the state too and I respect the, um, you know, I respect people in the service and what they do, like I said. But I don't think war should be used as a business to make money. Um, anyway, these are things that piss off Tourette. Hello. She's pretty powerful, okay. Then I got that uh, the High Priestess and the King of Wands in reverse from that one read, the second reading, are reincarnated Atlantean priests that were having a magic war with us here again, trying to derail the rebirth of the Divine Feminine, which leads to um, healing and ascension as we devolve. Okay, this is the destiny and cannot be stopped. Hello, message. Wow, okay. <laughs> this is really serious, people. Okay. Listen to what else. You've reached level five. And level five, you can create with your mind. You go to level five when you can be trusted to do the right thing. 
because you felt bad that you never got to have your own family, you are selected to be a higher level spiritual mother and because you resonated with the Virgin of Guadalupe, you have spiritual dominion over this territory. Whoa. And I did. I had all this Virgin of Guadalupe fixation for a while. Okay. Uh, likewise, so do all divine feminines wherever they are in the world. You have spiritual dominion or spiritual sovereignty, freedom to be all the things you are as earth women. Okay? Then the goddess Tarette signed off. She said, done now. Then she threw in a couple more things. <laughs> okay. So, and she sent, she blew us a kiss. She sent a shooting star to everyone. Um, I put, I'm putting a few images that I searched online for some images. I'm putting in a few images of Tourette. And one of them is from some game, some, you know, Xbox game or something. It's, there really is a little Tourette. And I really got this, all of a sudden I got this vibe of a tarot reader that I enjoy watching. I maybe shouldn't say the name, but I got that I'm connected to that person and that she also has Tourette as a spirit guide. And uh, so that was interesting too. Um, oh, and also we're both daughters, daughters of the Nile. Can't see my hands, but I can see them both. We're both daughters of the Nile. So, yeah, I've got a connection to somebody else who's a tarot reader out there that goes way back to ancient Egypt. Like, you know, like old dynasty, ancient Egypt. Okay. So, whoa. Check the description box and, and always do that. Not, I, I'd love if you can donate, please do, but mostly I want you to go there to click on the music links for the day. Today's is just great. It's uh, Ramsey Lewis and Earth, Wind and Fire, Sun Goddess. Okay, so um, I think Tourette signed off. I think I can go back to bed for a little while. <laughs> it's, uh, what time is it? It's all, it's 6.30 already. Signing off here. Please like, share, and subscribe.